if you don't know, if those of you who've heard me before, I, I always rave at this moment about presenter tools. Um, hunt for it if it's, to see if it's on your computer. It's just a part of being a Mac person, but I think if you're a PC person, you have to look deeper. Um, so as I was saying last year when I was here, uh, talking about library standards, it feels like we've been talking about these a long time. Uh, and it is kind of fun to talk about it today because they are very soon to be a full document. So before I launch into that, um, I do want to say, I want to acknowledge the work of this conference planning committee. This is such a good event. Um, I'm supposed to be retired. I'm supposed to be retired and I end up going to Deb Stanley's session and I'm absolutely fascinated and taking notes and I'm thinking, why are you doing this? Well, I'm not totally retired, I'm working two days a week. Um, and I'd also like to thank the paper monitors who are passing out the one and only handout that you get today, two-sided, and the key thing on that one sheet is the URL at the top where you'll find just about everything that I'm talking about today. Um, so thank you, Southern Section, for this day, and I hope that you're getting as much out of it as I am today. And thank you for coming. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, I quickly went through what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to do on. I'm going to start my timer so I don't go into Glenn's time. Um, I'm going to talk about the just the basics, you know, an abridged version of the library standards. Because there might be somebody here who's just been waiting to tune in until the project was done. Um, you live, you lead really busy lives, and I can understand that happening. Um, and I'm also then going to start talking about implementation the real important part of so the rubber meets the road. This is, um, when you work in a state agency, you would probably appreciate the humor of this even more. Because in my office, we've been involved with common core standards. And every day people go to work and they work on PowerPoints and PowerPoints. So if you're in the back and you can't see it, it's my favorite Dilbert. And um, his fantasy is maybe I'll be the man who changed an industry with his PowerPoint slides. Uh, the short story, the abridged story, this all started um, this chapter of the library standards saga started uh, when we didn't pass a piece of legislation that CSLA was working on that would have created library standards and instead we had to take out an old 40 year old section of ed code, dust it off and then and that was done because Jack O'Connell, or I'm sorry, uh, because CSLA wrote a letter to Jack O'Connell and Jack o saying, we think you ought to enact this. How come this isn't happening? And he wrote back saying, I think this is important and I will. Now, I know that because I also live in that schizophrenic world where I help CSLA draft the letter and then I help Jack O'Connell write the response and then I help and then we start the project. But that's what you do to get something out the door. Um, it is a little schizophrenic. So what this ed code did was it gave us the authorization that the State Board of Education, edu blah, blah, and I ate lunch too, um, that the State Board of Education will adopt standards, rules, and regulations. And in the 70s, they did some regulations, and they had good forward thinking to think about the library in the context of learning, um, uh, collaboratively planning and teaching with classroom teachers. So that was that was showing good foresight. Um, but meanwhile, they had never done standards. And we really, at that time, weren't in a standards environment. Now we live in a standards environment. In fact, we've lived in that for at least the last decade. And just in case you need this little review, content standards in California define what a student should know and be able to do. Um, and in the library world, we had had standards before, but they were often quantitative program standards, you know, like how many of something should you have, how many square feet, how many books, how many periodicals. But they really weren't looking at what should a student know and be able to do at second grade that has to do with information literacy. And they were called, we've continued to call them library standards, even though I know there are sexier names we could have given them. 
<laughs> but library standards is what the regs or the the ed code told us to do. So we just kept the name. We didn't want any wrinkles in this project. Um, so let's put our library standards into context. Some of you have seen this before. I'm not going to spend time, but you can see the list of library sta or of content standards that we've had in California. And you can see when they were adopted. That gives you that quick history. Um, and in 2010, after almost a three-year process, September 16th, to be exact, for those of you who might be interested, um, that was the day that the library standards were passed by the State Board of Education. And then, our whole environment has shifted a little bit because the first two subject standards on the list were um, English language arts and mathematics. And now, to replace those, we have what is called Common Core State Standards. And they incorporate a lot of what our content standards used to do, but they are new and they're going to drive that whole editorial revision process. Um, it's a consortium project with more than 40 states, and they're also looking at the assessment for the Common Core Standards. So, by the way, the library standards are the first content standards to come out after the adoption. This is like a month after the adoption of the Common Core Standards, and we pass as compatible. If we were if we were dating, we could now marry according to that man. So in the school library standards, we have two parts. The first part is that student standard part, and the second part is the quanti more of what we'd always been hoping for, the quantifiable part. Um, and the first part is what I'm going to look at very quickly. So don't look down at your plate. Um, it's these should look familiar at this point. Access, evaluate, use, integrate. Okay, that's, that's what our writing team, and our writing team, two critical people for changing the way that group worked, Glenn Warren, Pam Woolman. But <laughs> these look familiar in a national context, but the reality is that that group sat in the room uh, at the Department of Ed and totally reconceptualized what they wanted to do. And it still comes out to this. You know, it's still, it still comes out to let, how do we find it, how do we evaluate it, how do we use it, and how do we put it into practice in life. So um, is there anybody else who was on that writing team here today? I, didn't, I, I really wanted to call out both Glenn and Pam because it was their work with kindergarten and first grade that changed the way we were looking at what we were doing. And everything built from them. Um, so then, if you look at it a little more deeply, what you'll see is a statement after each one of those major concepts. And then these um, substandards, yeah, substandards. They're not substandards. <laughs> In fact, I hadn't seen the standards for a while. I'd been working on other projects. I just didn't want to pick them up and read them yet one more time. And then I had to because we were working with the editor. So I closed myself off in a quiet room, left the phone, left the computer, and sat and read the standards from beginning to end. First tip is, it doesn't take long. That's for your reference later. And the second thing is, I put them down and I said, these are good. These are practical. As Deb said today, they're already starting. You know, they start to age really quickly on the shelf. But for most schools in California, they are cutting edge for them. Um, and then if you look at two, maybe, there. Um, this is the evaluate part. You can see what's happening. These look familiar. I'm not reading them to you because I'm giving you a link and you can, you're all going to go home and read them again anyway. The third one is the using information. And I love 3.1. Could it be any thicker? <laughs> that demonstrate ethical, legal, and safe use of information in print, media, and digital resources. Um, draw conclusions, make informed decisions. Use the information creatively. 
Okay. And then the fourth one, this is the one where you find the connection to reading, which is a huge discussion for the group. Read widely and use various media for information, personal interest, and lifelong learning. Seek, produce, and share. Boy, those words take on more power with social networking. And then appreciate and respond. We, I don't know if this group would even question it, but out of other groups, people have questioned, what do you mean, is it all information? There's no fiction? And the reality is information in this context means art, music, literature, it is all information. Okay, and then I've done this, I think I did this last year to show you how it progresses through the, through the grades. You look at, you pull a standard like 1.3, and this is, we've actually done something to help you with this, but let me just show you this quickly. 1.3 is identify and locate a variety of resources online and in other formats using effective search strategies. In kindergarten, that looks like you, can, you know where the library is. You know where the things you can use in the library are. You know how and be able to check out resources from the library. There are a lot of schools that don't let kindergartners check out resources. By first grade, they're actually demonstrating now correct procedures to turn a computer on and off and to open and close applications. I know a lot of adults who need to learn to close applications. <laughs> Great work. I'm skipping to grade three. By this grade, you can perform a basic search of the automated catalog, understand the function, I'm going fast. By grade five, um, create and use complex keyword searches to find specific information. Grades 7 and 8 is a combined um, section of the book. Conduct multi-step information searches to get the idea. Um, and then at 9-12, they can use controlled vocabulary, natural language. We're much, much more um, into the level of proficiency. The department secretary in our department just said to me on Tuesday when I was working, she said, I just read the library standards again. And like me, I don't know how many times she's read them, proofing them to go to the state board, the many times that we were trying to get this to the state board. And she's, she said, you know, I don't know how to do all of those things. I think those are good goals for me. And that was, what a, what a nice feeling that was to hear her say that. All right, that was your overview of part one. And what was part one again? Student okay. standards. Okay, what students should know and be able to do. Part two is very short. And part two is the quantitative section. It's based on research and surveys. It's not based on, we think that the school library ought to have six subscription databases for periodicals, fully indexed, fully text. That's not what it says. What we did was we pulled from the research that describes what school libraries have across the country. And then, what do the good ones have? <laughs> if you didn't hear that, that was a lovely, that was perfect. What school libraries have in the rest of the country is librarians. <laughs> um, I love that. And then it delineates, essentially, the purpose of this section is to delineate what it takes in the setup of a school library in order to support the learning that the students should be doing in part one. Okay? That's all it is. Um, part two looks at four sections, staffing access, teacher librarian responsibilities, resources. That's all I'm saying about the document itself. But let's get started with the standards. Okay, let's start. What are we going to do with them now that we've got them? All right, first of all, there are things coming from the Department of Education. And these are two mock-ups. So one of the first things we have to do is figure out which color. And I don't want either one of them because the first one is the color that the math standards are. And the second one is okay, but it's really close to another content standard. I'm, I'm after light yellow or spring green. There's a dark gold for the English language arts standards, and they're kind of going out now with Common Core. So this is not a good use of my time, however. Uh, 
the pre-pub version that's online is look, at this moment looks considerably different from not considerably different. It looks it has a lot of. Um, oh, let me switch that. The new document that I have seen working with the editors has substantial improving edits. Now they don't change context, they don't change content, but they change wording and understanding. And that document is not available on, online yet, but we're hoping that by next week um, that the pre-pub version will be up. Um, but I thought you might want to just see a mock-up. It's like, oh, that is a real document. It's not exciting. It's not graphic, graphically illustrated. It's simply content standards that look like, and this is the important thing, that look like every other subject's content standard. That's what we want. Everything I show you here is on the CDE Library webpage. That's at the top of your handout. Um, so you will get an idea of what's there. We've got PowerPoints that are just about ready to come up. I don't think they're whiz-bang, but they are practical. And an example of one of them is there's an overview of the library standards, short, scripted, and the handouts are there. There's a PowerPoint coming up introducing the student standards, again, with the handouts. There's a PowerPoint going up on introducing the program standards. And perhaps the most important at this point is there's a, a slide presentation going up that is Common Core State Standards and the Model School Library Standards. These are things that will help give you credibility. Take them, use them, adapt them, change that darn format away from the Department of Ed, which we have to use, although it now does have our new superintendent's name on them. So, um, All right, so more from CDE. We've got a sliced and diced version of the library standards and more. That's what the pluses are. A sliced and diced version of the library standards. I've got like five copies just to pass around. But when we were meeting with the library expert group that was evaluating library standards in the context of Common Core, one of the suggestions that came up was it would really be helpful if we had a sliced and diced version that looked across grade one and then the standards, grade two. And they, they don't perfectly line up, but they that should help as teachers are looking at what goes in their grade level. Yes? Now I had a question. At my school district, there are no elementary school librarians. How can, this, how can those standards be implemented? Because I find at a middle school and high school librarian, I'm teaching a lot of the elementary standards and they get that in elementary school. First of all, that's the reality is that if you have nobody teaching these skills before they get to you, you'll be teaching everything and they've missed up to you. Um, these aren't just for library people. These are for classroom teachers, for administrators. So we could hope, you know, in a perfect world, in a perfect world there'd be a teacher librarian at every elementary school. And you can really tell the difference as you move up, including all the way up to the community college level. They can tell. Um, when, when you're not there. But I'm not going to go down that path right now except to say I feel your pain. <laughs> um, but there are other resources on that site um, that might be worth a look. There's a table of alignment between the Common Core Standards and the Library Standards, and we've got other correlations being prepared, and we'll be posting those as we have them. Uh, we're pulling out the county office library directors together uh, in two and a half weeks, three weeks, and they're going to get a head start so that they can start to conduct some things in the county office so that you're closer to, to getting together. Um, but if you can't get together, we've also got a webinar planned, a scripted webinar. Um, I can't, there are webinars on everything for you. I, I have trouble imagining anything more boring at this point. But it'll be there for those of you between 12 and 2 a.m. who would like to go to the iTunes U and see such things to help you sleep. All right, so from CSLA, you may be noticing the graphic up in the corner. That's available to you along with all of the graphics that we've got from our wonderful illustrators. And thank you for that. Um, applause, applause. Yes. <laughs> 
And I'm going to come back to that in a minute because I think that's an important topic. But meanwhile, let's look at what CSLA has done. I, can't, I must acknowledge at an event like this that they nudged the process to start the new library standards. And they were there. Um, I think that was a, almost a personal relationship with the State Board of Education at the time that we were trying to do this. Glenn was there. Pam, did you come up and talk? Um, Connie Williams, they, I think they just recognized her when she stepped to the podium. John came up and talked. Um, you, were, you were relentless in the best way. And also supported the uh, participation of building the library standards. It doesn't say that there, does it? There. All right, so things like today, CSLA is very aware, it's why I got invited um, to talk about the standards and help you get positioned for that. You know, this spring has been a tough spring, and this the library standards may not have been the highest on your priority list, but they're a positive that help give you credibility with your teachers and administrators. Um, the spring journal is going to be dedicated totally to the library standards. And if I haven't given you enough history today, I have a 600 word article in there that gives you even more. Uh, there's an online tutorial coming that I understand Leslie Farmer has been developing on digital citizenship. And then there's the wonderful Web 2.0, Library 2.0 tutorial um, set. One for students, one for adaptive uh, access, one for junior high, and one for us. And then um, Glenn's going to talk about this more, but Brokers of Expertise is going to be like a two-way exchange on the library standards. It'll be what you make available. I, I look at it as Facebook for teachers and, and teacher librarians. The things you make available will then help stimulate the discussion for others in the state at the same time that they will be showing others, decision makers, that you're part of this process. And I'll leave the rest for Glenn to tell you. Um, okay, so implementation ideas and tools from you. I say start with reading the document. Just, it's, it, it's quick. It's quick. And um, don't do that until the revised pre-pub version is online. Don't waste your time. Um, share it with teachers, parents, administrators. Try to get, try to get into places where you can talk about it. Because these standards really show you as a teaching, a part of the teaching faculty. Lord, local board policy, Long Beach Unified was the first school district that I'm aware of in the state that revised their uh, board policy to reflect the new library standards. And if you want to know more about that, talk to somebody from Long Beach or their board member, John, who's here today, who helped to drive that. Crystal. And in conjunction with that, if there is a strategic planning process happening in your district, these are the skills that our students need. No matter what their subject area is, these are the skills they need to be effective users of information in this time that we live in. Um, the library plan may momentarily be quiet. You know that library planning required as part of the school and library improvement block grant because the flexibility was past that meant everybody could just ignore it for a few years until the budget got better. But it'll come back. As I talk to categorical programs people, I just went over my time. As I talk to them, I say, it's easier to keep a plan going and fresh than it is to kill it and start all over again later. So. And they all agree. OK, this is one of my favorite cartoons of the year. Um, and if, it looks like the top of the F is cut off, but it is a bit freaky with this wireless technology. Um, I think it's also a little freaky to live in this budget climate that we've been living in. And one of the things that hooks our, our claws to the wire and helps, you notice they are still, or they all, all the birds were still together. And I think that's one of the things that happens with us. The Strong School Library, the campaign for California, let's see, the California Campaign for Strong School Libraries. There, I've just said the whole thing. And I'm putting that in here because part of the message, they, they talked about the old message and the new message. 
And the new message, one of the things that it talks about is that children need what school libraries offer. The total focus, children need this to be effective at users of information and ideas um, as they move forward into work. And also, one of the other tenets of the plan is um, that they're using the school library standards. Um, it says, and defines the minimum standards. So they, they, that's part of this campaign that you're going to see in a lot of different places. The uh, URL for the Strong School Libraries campaign is in front of you, I think. It's not on my handout. There. It's, hold those up. I've got extras, they too. Get, okay. Um, and if you think that all they do is sell t-shirts, you're really mistaken. And when I have that county office group in a, a couple weeks, I'm going, when I get home, to the cafepress.com website to order some prizes for those people. They all, everybody needs that. You guys started your morning with a prize. And it's charming. It, and if you want a testimonial about the rubber duck from the Seattle Public Library, holding a book, I will tell you that because he's in my tub. Um, and the last slide, a couple minutes over, I apologize, is that there is a difference between having access to information. Everybody thinks that kids just having access is the important thing. But really, the important part is knowing what, it, what to do with it when you have it. Um, and that's one of my favorite quotes. So on that note, I will, whoops not slide into somebody else's presentation. <laughs> um, can I hand the one, two questions? Anybody? Just, are you putting this online? What are you doing today right now? Is this going to be available online? Um, through, I was thinking through the wiki. Can I do that? Because it's an unofficial department slide presentation. The official ones are all that boring yellow with... <laughs> yes? Uh, I was looking at this bookmark. I think it would be a great t-shirt. I think it is on the site. It is on the site. Go look there. I mean, before you do any shopping for anybody's birthday over the whole next year, <laughs> go there. Because it's just, it's so much more than t-shirts, and they're accepting donations even. All right. Yes. I just want you all to know that Jackie Simonitis, our VP of Communications, created that logo. She created, she's taking a class, and she's just amazing. So That was in my notes. Yeah. Thank you. I meant to say that, but there was probably a lot I meant to say, and I was still long. Thank you for letting me be here today and have a wonderful rest of the day.